Hello everyone, Toxic Brand, looks like a name change is required. Many of you agree with me that Harry is quite unhappy, especially because he is attempting to sneak into the United Kingdom. I honestly believe he slipped in since there's no way it wouldn't have been leaked earlier, especially by Harry's attention-seeking, paparazzi-loving wife, who is clearly having a rough week. Meghan's American Riviera Orchard trademark has once again fallen into legal issues. Her trademark has been refused, and she has three months to resolve the matter with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. If she doesn't, her entire application may be abandoned. She must additionally pay additional fees because she did not pay the right application fee the first time. Doesn't she have all of these top executives working for her and Archwell? But I suppose they seldom stay around long enough to complete what they started. Mama Knows Best LLC, the parent firm that filed the application, has the same business address as Archwell. It also closely resembles Martha Knows Best, Martha Stewart's brand. When the application was first submitted, it was outlined to be flogging kitchen and drinkware, as well as jams, but has since become so broad with all of the descriptions that it has caused further complications with the trademark application, with additional reports claiming that various parts of the paperwork had not even been signed. Megan clearly does not excel Excel in paperwork or research as it becomes more difficult for her. On August the 31st, the Patent Office announced that firms cannot trademark geographic areas. So, while the coastline surrounding Meghan and Harry's alleged house and Santa Barbara is known as the American Riviera, naming her business enterprise American Riviera Orchard might generate additional issues and may even be prohibited. So, even after she has paid the additional expenses and resolved all of the issues, she may still need to alter the name. I honestly find this weird. It's evident that she launched it to overshadow Prince William and the Diana Awards. But, honestly, who would establish an enterprise like this without first completing all of their paperwork and conducting some basic research? Can I call my business this? Can I trademark it? She has not even completed the basic minimum. So all of the business lawyers and managers she appears to have working for her are plainly underpaid. Meghan is genuinely the Duchess of Disaster, so the humor just flows naturally. Now, moving on from the self-exiled ex-royals, let us talk about His Majesty, who looked great as he inaugurated the Royal Horticultural Society's annual summer display on Saturday. However, in a humorous video clip that has gone viral, the king encountered some difficulties when attempting to cut the ribbon with some scissors. Despite the fact that he is often portrayed as a sad grump, he laughs along with everyone else. He, along with Queen Camilla and the rest of the royals, Princess Anne, is recognized for being the same. I believe they all have a fantastic sense of humor especially when interacting with the public. They laugh at themselves, don't take themselves too seriously, and it's just the media that they like capturing such moments. And, as we all know, I've seen the king appear irritated on occasion. We all have off days, and when we do, we don't usually have the whole world's media pointing a camera at us to catch the occasion. Moving on to my next non-Harry and Meghan topic. There have been some intriguing developments from the Earthshot Prize. They have now selected five new members to the team, one of whom may have a few plates shattering over in Montecito. They have nominated two new ambassadors to represent the Earthshot Prize on a global scale. First, we have Nom Zama Bata, a South African actress and activist who is also an ambassador for the United Nations Commission on Refugees. She founded the Lighthouse Foundation, which invests in education and training for young people in her native nation of South Africa. The second appointment is Australian wildlife enthusiast and environmentalist Robert Irwin, who is continuing his father's legacy alongside his sister Bindi, but hopefully not disturbing as many crocodiles. Robert and Bindi were two and eight years old when Steve Irwin was tragically killed in a freak accident 
with a stingray. Both Robert and Bindi have established careers in wildlife conservation, continuing their father's work at the Australian Zoo. Both new ambassadors presented trophies at the Singapore Earthshot Prize last year, and this year they will continue to use their platforms as well as their appeal to a younger fan base. They will assist in promoting the incredible work that the Earthshot Prize winners do and will continue to accomplish. Now, quite a few people remark, Taz, it's a little hypocritical that you promote and support the Earthshot Prize while criticizing Prince Harry's work on climate change through Travelist. The difference is that Harry preaches from his ivory tower, as do many other well-known celebrities, who travel around in super yachts, super automobiles, and private aircraft. As I previously stated, they employ them as taxi services while preaching to the rest of us that we are unable to go on our yearly week-long vacation to Spain. The Earthshot Prize is not about preaching to people. It is about developing solutions to fix the damage that has already been done, rather than making something up. This is about cleaning up rivers and seas, protecting forests, assisting with wildlife conservation, making the globe a better place for future generations, and contributing to the planet's longevity. And when it comes to pollution, I feel that we must save the Earth from ourselves. So, when it comes to Harry and Travelist and all that, I believe a lot of it is made up nonsense. I believe it is for the affluent elitist to preach at us an attempt to virtue signal by saying, aren't we fabulous? Despite the fact that they are the ones who create more harm to the ozone layer with their carbon footprint and all of the other junk that they preach at us than we do. Aside from the two new ambassadors, three new faces have joined the Earthshot Council where they will assist pick this year's award recipients. You have Wanjura Matai, a Kenyan environmentalist and campaigner, then there's Namonte Nkwimu, an Ecuadorian activist who is a tireless advocate dedicated to saving the Amazon, her native territory. Then there's Jose Andres, the founder of World Central Kitchen. World Central Kitchen is an excellent organization that works on the front lines, feeding emergency personnel and individuals affected by disasters, earthquakes, flooding, fires, and war zones. They give food help in times of hardship. Aside from the obvious humanitarian work that this organization does, you may have heard of it because World Central Kitchen previously collaborated with Archwell, which means that Harry and Meghan made a small donation and were then allowed to use the organization to promote themselves and Archwell. Meghan revealed last year that she had also contributed a particular recipe her signature dish, to a charity cookbook, which was her lemon oil cake. For years, we were told Megan's trademark food would be banana bread. But now it's lemon oil cake. It makes you ask, who did she borrow that from? But, as for World Central Kitchen, when Harry and Megan released their impact statement of all of the things, notice the word in, that they had done, they claimed credit for World Central Kitchen's efforts despite the fact that Harry and Meghan may never have done anything other than donate. This was also when they were smacked down by Global Citizen, who claimed that they were the ones who helped push a vaccine drive, but he said it was a collaborative effort. But the fact that Jose has now paired up with Prince Harry's arch foe, his brother, Prince William, and the Earthshop Prize has certainly raised some eyebrows. Maybe it's because he's realized Harry and Meghan are phony humanitarians, especially after they traveled to Nigeria and Colombia, saw some impoverished places, and then gleefully utilized public money to support their vacation. Not only that, but I saw that when tragic news broke lately, World Central Kitchen had lost a lot of volunteers. They were volunteering in Gaza and were murdered by an airstrike. Despite utilizing the foundation to market themselves as humanitarians, Harry and Meghan maintained an uncommon silence. But, as we all know and have seen, once you have served your purpose for Meghan, it's as if you don't exist. So perhaps this so-called collaboration has failed. 
Let's be honest. This is not the first time someone has separated themselves from the pair. You've got George and Amal Clooney, who were clearly backing Harry and Meghan until they saw, I believe, their true character. And, as we all know, George and Amal now work closely with the King's Trust, as does another well-known figure who DJed Harry and Meghan's wedding and gave them a piece of artwork as a wedding gift. As we all know, Idris Elba received his big break thanks to the Prince's Trust, which is now known as the King's Trust. He also works closely with the King as a publicist for the King's Trust. Then you have Jacinda Ardern. I know a lot of people aren't big fans of her, but she also collaborated with the Earthshot Prize. She was the previous Prime Minister of New Zealand. She featured in Harry and Meghan's live-to-lead Netflix documentary, Blink and You Miss It, and then issued a statement stating that she did not work with Harry and Meghan. She had recorded the footage for the Mandela Project before it appeared in their documentary. She decided to do it because she felt it would benefit the Mandela Foundation. Obviously, it came apart, and for some reason, it was sold to Netflix to be passed on, and they reasoned, oh well, this is a project Harry and Meghan can't possibly screw up. And, clearly, they didn't account for the nasty reaction Harry and Meghan get every time their features appear on television. However, Jacinda's public statement, Whoa, no, I didn't work with them. I'm nothing to do with what they're up to, it demonstrates the negative reaction that Harry and Meghan get from others when they believe. I'm not getting tainted with that reverse Midas touch. Thank you very much. We even heard that Harry and Meghan had become great friends with Gwyneth Paltrow and Cameron Diaz when Meghan timed a paparazzi stroll into a sushi bar while Cameron Diaz and Benji Madden were outside. The couples did not hug or talk to one another, but it was stated that they were all hanging around and eating lunch together. Isn't it strange that Meghan was supposedly looking for sponsors for Aro? She was in the Hamptons, and Cameron Diaz, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Reese Witherspoon were all there, but none of them took a photo with her or invited her to their good dive. Meghan, in fact, did not take photographs with many celebrities due to the same reason. She's poisonous, and Hollywood celebrities don't want their brands tarnished. Now, to wrap up the video and continue on the same storyline of people shutting the door in Meghan's face after a while, once they've realized, I guess, her true nature, and she's not quite the lovely humanitarian that she likes to paint herself out to be, a story has emerged that made me laugh. And while I'll confess that I'm not sure whether that's true, there's a part of me that really wants it to be, and it appears that Kris Jenner is one among those who has opted to shut the door in Meghan's face. We now see Meghan dancing with the Kardashians at Beyonce's concert on one end of the balcony, and it was interesting that she never had her photo taken with them when she was there, as she had with a few others. But what was hilarious was that I believe, not long after, Doria, her mother, was photographed with Kim Kardashian and Kris Jenner on another occasion. Now, the last time I heard about their fledgling friendship, or whatever you want to call it, Harry was apparently skiing. That's when he called in the Diana Award with Kris Jenner's boyfriend, Corey Gamble. Then Kris Jenner received her dish of lemons with jam from Meghan when she was mailing, I believe, one of 50 jars and only about 10 people came forward. Kris Jenner was one of the individuals who stepped out, which I'm sure Meghan was happy for, so she posted about it on Instagram. Now, I'm not a Kardashian fan because I never have been. I can proudly state that I have never seen a single episode of the Kardashians, but I do know that all of them, even the Jenners, can make millions of dollars with a single post. They are paid millions to promote. Kris Jenner's post was a bare minimum. There was no major advertising, no Chrissy Teigen eating it, no Nacho demonstrating that it is edible. It was really the very minimum you could do. And I wondered at the time whether Kris Jenner felt compelled to do that or if she felt pushed into the corner 
so she was just like, yes, here's Megan's bowl of skanky-ass lemons and her jam, and she was done. Because the thought that Kris Jenner is now saying, I'm not going to deal with Megan, entertains or amuses me so much because I remember when Megan married into the royal family when Meghan invited all of these A-listers to her wedding instead of her own family members. Because we know she was searching for future deals and things she could do once they went. At the time, it was believed that Kim Kardashian had attempted to reach out to Meghan on multiple occasions to offer friendship. She had supposedly given her some gifts and a pleasant greeting message. Hey Meghan, I'll take a wedding invite or I can come to your baby shower in New York. Of course, insiders said that Meghan thought the Kardashians were not the proper match. They were beneath her. And, as I previously stated, I find this highly entertaining. I like the idea that the Kardashians are now saying, you know what, Meghan's so far down that greasy pole, she's fallen from grace so much that she's actually beneath the Kardashians. They're saying, She's just not worth us risking our brand and tarnishing our reputations by dealing with her, Jim, because that, to me, would be a little bit of divine karma. Many individuals have said about Megan that she needs to be cautious. It's not just Megan. It's a saying. Be polite to the folks on your way up, because you never know who'll be ready to kick you or slam the door in your face on the way down. And this is what I believe Megan is finding. But. No, I simply adore it. The image of the Kardashians saying, Hell no, you're too toxic for us, makes me smile inside. In fact, Rachel Markle graduated from Northwestern. Now, that's a story as believable as her supposed humanitarian efforts. Let's face it, no one will ever convince me that she even saw the inside of a classroom there, let alone graduated. I mean... We're talking about someone who can't even manage to sign a piece of paper correctly without turning it into a dramatic performance. The idea that she breathes through one of the most respected universities is almost laughable. More likely, she got shown the door long before any diploma was in sight. The real story is probably far less glamorous, something along the lines of being kicked out for her childish antics. Imagine this. Gluing a girl's eyes shut with crazy glue during a sorority hazing stunt. Now, that sounds much more like the kind of juvenile drama queen behavior we've all come to expect from Megan. Her father, always willing to clean up her messes, reportedly had to fork out a tidy sum to hush the scandal. The family of the poor girl gets a settlement and Megan gets booted out. Classic Markle creating chaos wherever she goes, and then pretending to be the victim of circumstances. She's always been a master of reinvention. I'll give her that. But graduating from Northwestern, please? She couldn't even stick around long enough to graduate from a sorority without being thrown out on her ear. I saw an article on Facebook last week that was referring to Rachel's Northwestern University days. An American lady commented that she knew for a fact that Rachel had never graduated from Northwestern University. I replied, I'd watched a video of Bookworm 2 on the subject. She was disciplined for a hazing incident and left. She confirmed that was true. Her father and Uncle Mike had the records sealed. It turns out the American lady's friend worked in the administration department of NWU from 1992. Rachel is listed in the catalog, but she said, if you delve deeper, Rachel never had enough credits to graduate. The pictures of her, if real, dressed in black robes and tassel hats were the colors of Northwestern College. Thankfully, she's lazy because if she actually puts work behind her endeavors, there are enough people who will buy snake oil. If she did what she said she was going to do in terms of charity, she might have become America's Diana, or so Megan's camp would put that nickname out there. In fact, we don't care about those two. But most of us do care about values and moral fortitude, and because of that, we need to make a stand against liars because truth and honesty do matter. Moreover, the tangled web Megan weaves, our own.
or should we call it another ridiculous overreach, is essentially non-existent. Yet here she is, throwing money at more application fees like they're going out of style. Honestly, Megan, if your little vanity project is struggling this much to even get off the ground, perhaps it's time to hang on to that dwindling fortune instead. 25 is shaping up to be an absolute train wreck for Harry and Meghan. With Netflix deals floundering, Spotify saying thanks, but no thanks, and their endless drama turning them into international laughing stocks. You'd think they might start economizing a bit, but no. Here's Meghan trying to breathe life into her so-called lifestyle brand, Aro, which, by the way, she's managed about as well as she's managed her public image, terribly. All of this organizational chaos, the scrambling over trademarks, the flailing attempts to launch a brand that nobody asked for, should have been settled ages ago, long before she so grandly announced ARO to the world. But now, it's all playing out in public, providing endless amusement for the rest of us, and serving as a high-profile embarrassment for Megan. It's the kind of karmic justice that you can't help but relish. Watching Meghan stumble over her self-made pitfalls, dragging Harry along for the ride, is quite the spectacle. It's like watching a reality TV show you just can't turn off. The cringe is so real, and the schadenfreude is delicious. Maybe next time, Meghan, think before you leap, or at least get a competent PR team. One thing that is indispensable is Meghan Markle. Bless her heart. She tries so hard to play the part, doesn't she? Strutting around in designer clothes, desperately trying to exude that royal elegance. But the result? A colossal fashion flop. Let's be honest. Meghan might wear the most expensive outfits, but somehow she still manages to look like she just raided the discount rack. Meanwhile, Princess Catherine and even little Princess Charlotte step out, looking effortlessly stunning and their clothes and accessories practically fly off the shelves before they've even finished their royal wave. It's almost comical how Meghan, with all her supposed Hollywood flair, can't pull off a single outfit without looking like she's trying way too hard. She thinks she's setting trends, but really, she's just setting herself up for ridicule. And let's not even get started on her accessories. A grab bag of gaudy trinkets that scream more trying to be relevant than style icon. Compare this to Princess Catherine, who makes every outfit look like it was made for her, radiating class, poise, and that undeniable royal charm. When Catherine wears something, it becomes an instant must-have, a staple in fashion magazines, and a trending topic on social media. And then there's Meghan, who can't even manage to make a basic coat look flattering. Even young Princess Charlotte, with her little bows and classic dresses, commands more style influence than Meghan could ever dream of. It must be hard for Meghan, constantly overshadowed by Catherine's natural grace and Charlotte's innate charm. She wants to be the queen of fashion, but the crown seems to slip further from her grasp with every mismatched outfit and poorly chosen accessory. Perhaps it's time Meghan stops trying to outshine the real royals and focuses on something more fitting for her talents, like finding a brand of yoga pants that might just work for her. That's the main content today. Now I want to hear your opinion. Please comment below to share with me and everyone. Thank you everyone for watching our video. I hope you will like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye and see you again.